My dear friends, you've heard me sing endless praise about Star Wars Rebels, and as we approach Ahsoka, as of the making of this video there are 17 days to go, I've come across a lot of talk about Star Wars Rebels, and it's got me thinking, what's with the sudden shift of opinion on this series? Because I was a Star Wars Rebels fan right from the start, I watched it back in 2014, and at the time, there was a lot of hate for it. In fact, in research for this very video you're watching right now, I revisited some forums from back in the day, and between 2014 and 2018, all you heard in the fandom was how good the Clone Wars series is, and how bad Star Wars Rebels is. But now, as we approach the Ahsoka series, everyone seems to love it. Well, not everyone but a significant portion of the fandom is singing its praise. There are a number of articles, YouTube videos, opinion pieces, urging fans to go watch Star Wars Rebels and why it's so good. But I do have to wonder, where was this praise at the time? Was it present but it just got drowned out by the hate? Where were these thousands of fans singing its praise during the release of the actual show? Star Wars Rebels ended five years ago. It's nothing new. So I came across this, and it's a very good article. Why does everyone want a Star Wars Rebel sequel? We want to see the search for Ezra Bridger. We want to see these stories continue. And even back in 2020 when this show was first announced, Star Wars Ahsoka, there weren't too many fans excited for the Rebels aspect. But now there are. The phrase Rebel sequel has been passed around the internet like nothing else. Even when Zebaralios appeared in Mando, everyone went wild. And I love to see that. So where am I going with this? Well, as you'll come to see, it's the same old cycle in the Star Wars fandom of nostalgia, how recency bias plays in, and how some Star Wars movies and shows are appreciated by different generations as time goes on. I'll come back to this in a minute. And for those of us who are fans of Star Wars Rebels, the characters, the message, the themes, in many ways it's one of the most perfect Star Wars TV shows, in spite of the way it was scrutinized for its animation style. And unlike so many other series like it, it ends exactly where it needs to, and when it needs to. The show tells the story of a crew of Rebels facing greater and darker challenges as the show progresses. There were lots of tones with Obi-Wan, Maul, Lando, Leia, Saw Gerrera, and throughout each season up until season 4, the members of the crew grew, and this is both individually and as a family. Ezra Bridger who was taken in, who'd suffered through so much and felt so lost without his parents, but he soon realized who his real family was. He faced so many challenges as a Jedi, being tempted by the dark side, and similar to Ahsoka in the Clone Wars, Ezra matured and learned from those hurdles. And it's really the epilogue at the end of season 4 that gives me goosebumps. And for many of us, the Ahsoka show is where that's going to pick up from. It's our to be continued moment. But in a sense, it's nice to see the show finally being embraced, and to not experience as much toxicity as there was back when it released. There was so much Ezra hate, so much hate for Sabine Wren, some people saying she doesn't feel like a Mandalorian, some fans complain she doesn't feel like a Star Wars character because she does graffiti, and a big consensus from many fans who didn't like the series was that it was too childish. Now I do understand that with time, a lot more varied factions of the fandom discovered the show. Some fans are still discovering it, and will do so after Ahsoka as well and I love it's being embraced. But I do wish more fans who liked the series when it dropped were more vocal about it, being hyped and spoken about in the same way it is right now as we get closer to Ahsoka. And I do find comparisons to the Clone Wars series and the Resistance a bit futile and meaningless. It's a different kind of series with a life of its own. It's not trying to replicate it in any way. And this sort of recency bias is nothing new in the Star Wars fandom. Fans were the same about the prequel trilogy, and fans start appreciating it more, especially those who were younger when it first came out, and after a few years nostalgia kicks in, and they associate Star Wars with those projects. It's an endless cycle, and I think it's time for Star Wars Rebels to get the same treatment, to get the same kind of retrospective view, where fans glorify a show that wasn't necessarily liked at the time. And it's only been half a decade since season 4. Nine years since the show first debuted. And in terms of criticism, I remember the Wookiee episode being specifically scrutinized. It was really only IGN, Variety, and Sci-Fi Wire which really praised the show from season 1 onwards. And look, there are three factors to consider. First of all, with any TV show, with any movie, you're gonna find fans who don't like it. Second of all, the show released in the midst of the sequel trilogy hype, so there was more discussion about 7, 8, and 9 than there was about the animated stuff. And third of all, animated shows do not get as much attention as live action, and so that's why now, as Ahsoka comes up, we're seeing a lot more relevancy to do with Star Wars Rebels, generally speaking. And it's worth pointing out it was popular with young teenagers at the time, who today would be adults. It was nominated for multiple awards, the 2015 Teen Choice Awards, the 42nd Annie Awards, 5th Critics' Choice Television Awards, and a bunch of others. 
And for a long time, fans believed that season three of Rebels was going to be the end. Imagine if it was. Season four was so powerful that I can't imagine Star Wars Rebels without it. It's the defining season, which without, we wouldn't have an Ahsoka show. I just don't think we would. And you know, with a couple of exceptions like Steve Bloom and Lars Mikkelsen, we do have all new actors playing characters we love so much. Natasha Lubaldiso has spoken about the work she did in preparation to play Sabine, and how she's honouring the animated version. And Mary Elizabeth Winstead has said the same thing about Harrison Jula. She's so over the moon to play this character in live action. And recently on the subject of Hera, she said this, She's a strong leader and fighter, but she's also maternal and nurturing. We often don't see that depicted on screen. We see army generals being these very masculine, hard figures. And now Hera's a general, and she has that, but she's also got this softness to her. She really wants her crew to be looked after and loved, and at the same time, she's pushing them to be better. And this maternal thing has come up time and time again. And now, thanks to the most recent trailer, we know Jason is going to be in this. So she's literally going to be maternal, a mother. And that might soften her in other ways too. She's a general of the New Republic, but being a mother might soften her view on the world. And even the way she treats her other friends like Ahsoka and Sabine. Rebels has laid all this groundwork. So I will say this, if you've still held out and not bothered watching Star Wars Rebels, it'll just give you a wider perspective, some depth to the way you're going to understand this show. It's a different dimension, a broader scope, you're not going to regret it. But now, my dear friends, I'm going to give you my Star Wars Rebels essential episode recommendations. And this is from across the show, not just the last season. If you're going to watch any episodes, you're in a hurry, you just want to see the ones you really think you need to see, and not waste any other time, then here are my picks. Season 1, Episode 7, Out of Darkness. This early episode is a fantastic illustration of the bond between Hera and Sabine. You also get the very important concept of Fulcrum. Moving on to season 2, which is heavily underrated. Season 2, episode 8, Blood Sisters. This one has bounty hunter Ketsu Onyo, who I do think could come into the Ahsoka show in some way. Next up, season 2, episode 18. This is where Ahsoka talks about Darth Vader and Anakin, where she comes to grips with the path Anakin chose. And then of course, what is rated by some fans as the best double episode arc, Twilight of the Apprentice, season two, episode 21 and 22. This one is chock full of fan service. It's a two part finale to the second season. And that's all I'll say, even if you've seen Rebels a million times, you need to watch this again. Even if you just rewatched it, go and watch it again. To kick off season three, I'm going with the premiere, The Holocrons of Fate. This one is where you see Ezra's trials and confronting Maul. There's a lot of goodies in this one. Next up, Season 3 Episode 5, Heroes Heroes. This one has a very interesting conversation between Thrawn and Heroes and Jula. And this has elements of the expanded universe in it, Thrawn's obsession with art and exploiting other cultures. Also, you just simply can't miss Season 3 Episodes 15 to 16, Trials of the Darksaber and Legacy of Mandalore. This one will help you with Book of Boba Fett and Mando Season 2 and 3 as well. And then, episodes 21 to 22, Zero Hour, parts 1 and 2. There is a fantastic scene with the Bendu, but also, the Rebel fleet versus Thrawn's forces really comes to a head. In season 4, I would say the entire season. But if you want some Bo-Katan, then watch the opening couple of episodes. The two-part season 4 premiere, Heroes of Mandalore, parts 1 and 2. You understand how Bo-Katan got the Darksaber before Mando season 1, where Moff Gideon has it. And then of course I have to recommend Season 4, Episode 10, Jedi Knight, one of the saddest moments in the entirety of Star Wars. Then Episode 13, A World Between Worlds. I've already broken this down many times, I won't dwell on it. And of course, the last two episodes, 15 and 16, Family Reunion and Farewell. And that'll give you a good understanding, a good grasp, provided you've also seen Mando, of where we're at in this show, in the Ahsoka series, how it builds on those characters and stories. But if you are a Rebels fan, let me know down below what your favourite episodes are. Some notable mentions include Episode 9 of Season 1, Gathering Forces, the opening to episodes of Season 2, The Siege of Lothal, Season 3, Episodes 12 to 13, Ghosts of Geonosis, Season 3, Episode 20, Twin Sons, and Season 4, Episodes 11 and 12, Doom and Wolves and Adore. As I say, I've just been trying to focus on those episodes which are relevant to Ahsoka, not just the best overall. But share your thoughts in the comments down below, guys. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give me a big fat thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and if you want to support the channel while also getting access to hours of videos not found here on YouTube, 
then please consider becoming a patron. The link is down there in the description. But until the next one, guys, may the force be with you always.